Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video we are going to get our UI set up for Pocket Droids Go. This is going to be the first step towards making it look like a real game. So I'm excited, let's get to it. But before we jump into that, we're going to do something I should have done in the last video. We're going to go ahead and save this scene. So save scene as, and I'm going to go into my scenes folder, and I'm just going to name this world, because it's the overview of the world, it's where our player is going to live save and now that we've got that in there i'm actually going to go ahead and create a whole new folder and name it world and i'm going to move the scene in there and that's because i like to package up scripts that are exclusive to a scene inside of a folder with it and so i typically give each scene its own folder just for organization purposes so now that we've got that going let's also turn on unity collab i like to use this just for version control so let's go ahead and start. And I'm going to say init project with worlds scene and publish now. And now that that's done, I'm up to date and saved. The first step in creating our UI here is going to be we need to add a canvas. So let's go to UI, add canvas. And I'm going to call this GUI. And then we're going to scroll out a bit so that we can see what's going on here. And I'm in free aspect mode. I just noticed. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to a 16 by 10 portrait. Perfect. And the question of the day is, yep, I think I am on the wrong side of the canvas. So let's switch around here. There we go. That looks a little better. So inside of our GUI, we are going to go ahead and create an image out of the UI folder. So right click on it, UI image. And this is going to be our profile badge. And then we're going to need another, we're going to need a button actually. So UI button. And then let's go ahead and get rid of this text because we're not going to need it. And we're going to name this menu button. Scroll out a bit. And it's going to come down here to the bottom right hand portion of the screen. And we are going to go ahead and import some of the assets that we have. And so if we open up the assets for this and we go to UI, we're going to go ahead and drag this entire UI folder in to our GUI directory. And we can close that. And now we've got our button and our font that we're going to want to use. So let's click on the profile badge. And then actually first we're going to want to update these textures to say Sprite 2D and apply Sprite 2D and UI. And apply profile badge as well. Sprite 2D and UI. So now let's click on this profile badge image up here in our UI and just drag the sprite over to it. And we're going to want to click preserve aspect. There we go, that looks a little better. And let's bring it up just a touch and over to the left, just a touch. Yeah, about there, that looks good. And then for our button, we're gonna want to grab the menu button and drag that on as the source image. And then again, preserve aspect. And you'll notice it's being constrained by this 30 pixel height. So let's go ahead and update that to a native value of 60 and 60. Or you can click the set native size button right there. And we're going to drag this guy a little to the right and more towards the bottom. We want it to be in the bottom right hand corner. And then let's go ahead and set our anchors. So anchor to the bottom left for this menu button. And then on the profile badge, we will anchor to the top right. And then we're going to need a couple of things here on the profile badge as well. Because as you can see, right now there's there's really not much to it. There's no text or anything, and that's because that's going to be dynamic. So let's right click here and say UI and then tech. And we're going to rename this to level tech. And then we're also going to go ahead and create another text object, UI text. And this one is going to be called. Now for our level text, we're going to want to bring it over here into the center of the circle-ish. And we're also going to update this color to be white. 
There we go. And we're also going to update this font to be digital and we'll click the X there. And we're going to go ahead and change the value of the text to something that we would normally see in game so we can kind of see how it looks, get a feel for it. So I'm going to go with 100 because I can't imagine anybody going above three digits for their level. And then I'm going to up this font size. So let's see how 28 looks. Yeah, I'd say that's slightly too big. So we'll bring this down to, say, 24. Yeah, about there. There looks good. So we'll set this about in the center to where it's still visible. And then for our XP text, we're also going to change this to white. So just pure white, all Fs. And we're going to update the font to Digitalt as well. And then we'll drag this and down. And then let's go ahead and zoom in here so we can get a closer look at these guys. For starters, I actually want to bring I want to go back to the level text and we're going to bring down the width by a lot. Maybe not that much. There we go. About there. So let's say a width of 36. 36 is good. And then we're going to center this guy. And justify it in the center as well. And then let's go ahead and move it back to where it belongs. So about there ish. Yeah, about there. And then for this XP text, we're going to go ahead and we'll adjust the size on that as well. So we're going to bring down the width. And what we actually want to do here is we want to fit it just so inside of this banner. So let's try 75 and see where that puts us. Scoot it over just a hair, a little bit more. And there we go. Perfect. 75 works. So let's go ahead and center this text and justify it into the center. Bring it up right there. That's what we want. And then for this one, we're not going to do a true font size. We are going to go ahead and, and click best fit. And we're going to put it somewhere between eight in case somebody gets a crazy amount of experience. And probably probably 12 is the largest we're going to want to go. Perfect. And just to kind of see how this will actually look, let's type in 115,000 space slash space out of 175,000. Hmm, that's not quite right. So let's shrink this height some. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So let's bring this height down to about 15. Okay, perfect. And we're going to bring it up just a hair. And now this should go ahead and shrink for us and grow depending on how much experience there is. So if we take off a few of these zeros, you should see it's bigger. Perfect. So now we're going to need one more piece for our GUI to be complete. Let's go ahead and create a UI panel. If I can find it, there's a panel. All right, let's zoom out so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing. Oof, not digging that skybox right now. OK, let's change the color to actually the same color that we're using for the black background on those icons. So 41, 41, 41, and then 64% opacity. So the full hex value should be 41, 41, 41, 64. And let's rename this panel to menu. And you'll notice the anchors are already set to stretch, so we shouldn't have to mess with anything there. Um, let's go ahead and create a UI object within this, though, of a button. And this is where we are going to implement Let's get rid of this text real quick. This is where we're going to implement this last droids button. So let's just call this droids button. And I'm going to drag this droids button asset on as the sprite and then preserve aspect. And then we'll just click set native size. And then I'm actually going to drag this over here. So it's kind of kitty corner to this menu button. The idea being if if the player has already pressed the menu button, then their fingers are somewhere around here. And especially on a phone, from a user experience standpoint, it's it's better to have that easily accessible. It saves our users some hassle. So you can either put it there or down here. But the basic idea is for menu buttons to kind of arch around this way as much as possible. If we had a whole bunch of menu icons, then I'd definitely put it in the middle. But this is just a decision I'm going with. And we are actually not going to do too much with this droids button together. Um, that's going to be part of the student challenge at the end of this section for you to implement that menu and make it look pretty. So by default, we don't actually want this panel to show. So I'm going to go ahead and click the active button to deactivate it. Oops. It would help if I click the right thing. There we go. 
So that's now deactivated. And the final piece to the puzzle that we are missing is a controller. We don't want this text to stay static. That's not going to do us much good. What we'll do instead is implement a controller for it. So I'm going to right click down on this world folder and I'm going to say create C sharp script and I'm going to name this UI manager. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up in my IDE. I am using JetBrains writer, but you're welcome to use whatever you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this start and update function. And we're going to need a couple of variables to control our UI. Take a second and kind of think about what we might need. If one of the things you thought of was a variable to control the experience text, you're absolutely right. So first we will serialize field private text, text. And then we're going to need another serialized field to control our level text. And then we'll need one more field to control our menu. I'm going to say private game object menu. And for the sake of defensive programming, which I'm a huge fan of. We are going to go ahead and call the awake function and we're going to make a few assertions so that our game throws an error if we don't have the required variables set. So we're going to go ahead and say assert dot is not null the text. And then assert dot is not null level text. And then assert dot is not null menu. That's just going to ensure that we have all of our variables set and it's not going to run into any null errors. Now we'll need three functions that are publicly available so that other objects can interact with them. The first one is going to be public void update level. And we're going to pass in an integer of level. And we're just going to say level text dot text equals level dot two string. Perfect. That's done. Public void update XP. And for this one, we're going to need the current XP and another integer for the required XP. And here we're just going to say XP text dot text equals current XP dot two string plus a space, a slash and a space plus required XP dot two string. Oop, not compared to to string. And then we're going to need one more function and we're just going to say public void toggle menu. And for this, we're just going to say menu dot set active not or exclamation mark menu dot active self. And there we go. We've got our UI controller. So let's save that script and head back to Unity. And I'm just going to take this UI manager and drag it onto the GUI. So let's click on the GUI and you'll see that now we have our UI manager and a slot for our experience text, our level text and the menu. So let's grab those guys. We're going to say level text in the profile badge. We're going to drag that down into level text. The XP, oops, the XP text, we're going to drag down into the XP text. And we'll drag our menu into our menu and spirits of coding willing. When we press this play button, it should run. Cool, no errors. We have our UI and that's clicking like a button. Perfect. And this is set up as the profile badge. We don't have any player data yet to feed into this. So we're just gonna leave that there to kind of remind us what it's for. However, pressing this button does nothing right now. And that's because we don't have that toggle menu function hooked up. And for now, I'm going to leave it that way in the project. But just to show you that it works, let's go ahead and stop running the project. And here in just a second, you'll see why I'm going to leave this alone. We're going to go ahead and add the on click. We're going to grab an object that contains the script we're looking for, which at this point is the GUI. So let's drag that down here. And then we're going to pick the out of the UI manager menu, our toggle menu function. And there we go. So let's go ahead and play and we'll click this menu button. And you'll see it shows our droids button. Perfect. But we don't have a way to exit this menu yet. And so down the road, I'll, I'll remind you when we get to that point, but we are going to go ahead and add that as an extra student challenge to swap out this menu button with another one that's a red X when we pull up this menu so that you can close it. For now, we're just not going to show that menu. So let's stop running and then remove this on click so we don't accidentally click it later. And for now, we're going to go ahead and call that good. So let's go ahead, click on this collab button. I don't know when I got signed out. That's kind of weird. There we go. And we're going to update our repo. 
and we're just going to say added GUI. Or you can say HUD or UI or whatever you want to say. I typically just call them GUIs. And we'll say publish now. Yes, we want to save. And we're done. From here, we can continue building out our world, which is what we will do next. So great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we will see you next time. <laughs>